So this uh, monstrosity uh, here is my Windows 3.1 computer. Uh, as you may have guessed, I do not have a case for it. And um, you can see the weird blower fan going on there. Um, someone was so kind as to cut the uh, CPU fan wires so darn close to the fan that I'm pretty much going to have to tear the thing apart to be able to attach new wires to it. But anyway, um, it's powered by a Newton Power, I believe, um, 160? Yeah, 160 watt power supply. Um, from what I know, I believe the 12... Is it 12? I don't know. Uh, one, of the, one of the volt rails is probably going to be a little weak for this, but this thing has ridiculous amounts of cooling, so I'm not really worried about it. And of course, this is an ATX power supply using a converter because my only free AT power supply, the Morex, I need to recap that thing because the 12 volts is like 8 volts these days. But, um, let me see. I believe this is a. Oh, shoot. I don't even remember it. Oh, yeah. It's like a Premio 219F motherboard, I think. I got it uh, 64 megs of. RAM, SIMS, uh, and the processor and heatsink for, I think, $7 on eBay. I don't know why they were getting rid of it for so cheap, but they were. And um, this is my first board with almost no things built in. It has, I mean, it has floppy and IDE, but in terms of ports, it's only got um, AT keyboard, which is functionally compatible with PS2, as you know and a PS2 mouse and it has a uh, I believe that one that BIOS chip there um, I don't know it's not a I guess it's just an EEPROM it's not like a I may be mixing up my terms here but uh, it's not one of the ones that erases with UV the sticker made me think it was for a moment though this appears to have a sys chipset and it's like an actual set of chips and um, I'm using an, a SCSI card for the hard drive and even the CD drive because the um, built-in IDE cannot go above 8 gigabytes and my smallest hard drive is 12 gigabytes that is to say my smallest desktop hard drive that is currently available for use as in not in another system so that's why i have this this is two gigabytes which is still quite ridiculous for 3.1 uh, i was going to do a 200 meg drive uh, it was a quantum pro drive that apparently was at least designed in the late 80s i'm not sure if it was actually manufactured then um which uh that would have been cool uh but the SCSI controller card wasn't having it. It would. It just said that there was a fault with the drive and it wouldn't go any further. So yeah, we have this Seagate Hawk instead. And then just a standard uh, 3.5 inch high density floppy drive. And then a double speed, I believe 1988 CD drive. And it takes um, these caddies which I don't even know if I can manage to open one-handed, which I may be able to because this one's broken. Uh, but you put the CD in there. And of course, if you're doing Windows 3.1, a Solaris disk is not going to get you very far. Um, so yeah, 64 megs of SIMS, and it has a Pentium 133 megahertz. Um, so overall, this system is rather overkill for, um, for what I'm doing. And then it has a... Uh, a card expert S3 Trio um, 64DX slash 2 or something like that. Um, but it's not great, but way more than Windows 3.1 needs. I believe it has 1 meg of RAM because it won't do anything. It won't do the fancier video modes. Uh, however, you can upgrade it. I don't know how well you can actually see that, but it has 2 blank uh, sockets there. Think about that. You can upgrade the memory in your video card. Try doing that today. And then we've got a 
I believe, an NDC fast Ethernet card. I guess I should clarify that I'm running Windows for, for work groups, so networking was a bit easier. And then we have a Aztec sound card modem combo. I've only thus far configured the sound. The modem is probably not configured from what I know. Oh yeah, the SCSI card, um, this is SCSI Fast, I think they call it. It does have a floppy controller, but I'm not using it because the onboard one does the job just fine. Um, and I did actually buy one of these serial and parallel port breakouts because, yes, I suppose I forgot about that. This board does have those. In fact, I think there is provisions for a second serial port, but it doesn't have a VGA or anything, but I guess it does have more ports than I initially let on. So, I guess it's pretty much time to turn it on, because I've pretty much covered everything, I think. Oh dear, I might need two hands to do this for all I know. Perhaps if I set the camera there, you'll actually get a good sound of the hard drive spinning up. There's the BIOS sign on screen. I'm probably too late to get into the BIOS. But there's the Adaptech thing signing on. Uh, we, I guess I'll show you the BIOS. It's, it is rather interesting, and it's by far and away the earliest BIOS I've ever seen that uses a mouse. Though I do know, I, I was well aware of that existing before I met this BIOS personally. So let's see, I believe delete. And you may notice that this monitor has what appear to be stuck pixels, but it's actually holes in the LCD screen. It's really amazing that it's not cracked. Um, when this thing first turns on, for some reason the screen is a little wavy. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's very strange. But um, you can see, whoa, whoa, I don't want to be in the IDE thing. But you can see here that you can use a mouse to do stuff. Okay, so it does have virus protection. I assume that's just the bootloader and all that. Um, but you can change, you can theme the BIOS, which that I did not know about, but that's kind of crazy that such things were a thing back then. Um, and you may notice that this kind of, oops, this kind of feels like Windows 3.1, though. It, it definitely doesn't work like Windows 3.1. Uh, it does do basic, uh, well, I suppose that would be an oxymoron to say basic advanced power management, but it does do um, some of the advanced power management, though Windows 3.1 seems to be interfering with that. But anyway, uh, we'll boot into DOS here. And um, it did take me a little while and the help of a friend to figure out how to actually uh, to do the CD drive. But you can see it loaded drive D. And uh, let's see. Just do a dir real quick. See that we have one million or one billion eight hundred and sixty one million three hundred and fifty three thousand four hundred and seventy two bytes free. Quite a ridiculous Windows three point one setup, I must say. Uh let's see here. And this is my very first experience with Windows three point one. Uh and I hated it plenty, uh getting it set up. Um if I had used something completely contemporary. I don't know. I may I may well have uh, lost my sanity if I did that. Okay. I guess I can restore the camera to the tripod. Wouldn't that be smart to actually use the tripod, wouldn't it? Okay. Alright, a 
it's not the greatest view because you can only see the monitor and not anything else, but, um, yeah, how about let's just type win. I know you can put this in the auto exec thing, but I don't think I want to do that because I, I'm, I'm probably not always going to want to use Windows. And you can see this is running in 1024 by 768 for the sake of this video and ease of seeing things I'm probably going to tone that down to um, 640 by 480. Oh yeah, uh, one of the audio programs is messed up. And speaking of audio programs, I accidentally figured out that if you do this, although it doesn't look quite right in giant screen giant resolution mode, but you get like various audio things like CD player and all that. That comes up when you hit the pause key. Oh dear. Okay. So if you don't know, this will be a learning experience for you, and as it was for me, that to, um, to change the display driver you go into Windows Setup, and you change um, System Settings, and then you select what you want. So for example, for the sake of this video, I want 640 by 480. I'm not going to crank up the colors because that's just going to cause issues. Oh dear, that's not... Okay, there we go. Must have clicked on the wrong one. And you can also change the keyboard and mouse. Um, one thing that I did find that was weird was that mouse support was not automatic. I had to actually uh, add that later on. Uh, I don't I don't really know if that's something specific to my configuration or not. I would assume so because the 3.1 setup was definitely built for a mouse. But anyway, it's asking if I want to copy the driver again or use what's on there. And since I'm not changing the driver itself in just the settings, I'll do that. But this hard drive, uh, one interesting thing to note is that it is old enough where it has the activity light. Um, granted, some random newer ones, uh, and the camera's having a fun time, it would seem. Um, some newer ones did have uh, did have the activity light somewhere, but this is a this is a uh, half height drive that is built completely to the spec. Um, at least I think it's half height. I'm pretty sure full height is a lot larger. But anyway, you can see that we're we're still in um, 256 color because this thing is vibrant. And yeah, I should really tell this thing to not open with Windows. Okay, apparently that's not how you do it. Okay, so... Um... I suppose let's just take a moment to look at the theme. I believe we go to color. Okay, and then... You know, I mean, there is a... Uh, let me show you the ridiculous one, I guess. There's hot dog stand, like... Completely ridiculous. <laughs> um, but... I thought Arizona looked fancy, so let's go with that. Now that I actually have more than 16 colors. Man, I really had a time getting the display driver installed. Okay. So you don't have Windows Explorer here, but you have File Manager. And for people who actually know a bit about uh, Windows 3.1, my video is probably, at least part of the video, is probably going to be insanely boring. And, uh... Okay, there we go. So, um, it's not too foreign of a concept to everyone. I don't know why exactly it's freezing. Um, it'll come to in a moment, but I don't, I don't know why it's doing it right now. Um, but for example, you can go into Hasbro and look at, look at the stuff in the Hasbro folder. It's not too crazy of a concept. You can just click on what drive you want up here. But what I want to show you is something that I was very surprised about. And that is that not only does Windows for Workgroups 3.11 have network drive support, 
but it works with the network share that my router puts out using Samba because my router runs a, a pared down version of Linux or depending on your perspective a, a built up version of Linux okay so let's just say E and we want the one thing is you cannot use an IP address here for some reason but the SMB name works so I want router and then the share which just happens I don't know if this is also limited to eight eight character names or not but it happens to be eight characters so it wouldn't cause an issue either way so um, you can see that the um, 8.3 truncation is not exactly appearing to work entirely correctly based on what I know about these file names uh, so I do not I absolutely will not do any writing to this uh, directory here. Okay. Please make a subfolder when you're doing this because this is going to be an absolutely huge mess to clean up if it doesn't. But yes, we're going to install Internet Explorer 5.0, which um, I've always thought is a surprisingly new version as far as Windows for Workgroups 3.11 goes, or as you can read, it's for any version of Windows 3.1 or later. Okay, well, apparently we're installing the Internet Tools, but it also says Internet Explorer 5, so I guess this is what we want. I wonder if this is some kind of special branded version or something like that. I, I don't know. Can we do a custom? No, I guess we can't. That's kind of disappointing. Uh, I do believe that this network card is actually my only network card that had four lights. Now, granted, this this angle is not great for being able to tell that, but. It's not worth taking the computer off the tripod over. But as you can see, it's also installing some some uh, other things. Uh, oh wow, Outlook, Outlook Express. That is a thing that I did not know existed for Windows 3.1. But you can be sure as heck that I'm going to try that out using, um, let's see, um, I guess something not important, like my net zero email address. Oh no, I mean, uh, like I said, I don't think I have any sort of modem drivers. Uh, granted, I don't know if those are actually needed in Windows 3.1, but um, I do somewhat doubt that it's actually going to find anything. I may actually switch this to an IDE CD drive at some point because uh, my other one, um, my other SCSI one, uh, which is definitely faster. The issue with that one is that it does it absolutely does not seem to work. I don't know if it's because it's doing some sort of stupid Apple thing, but as far as I know I have the settings set correctly and it just is not detected. Uh, but yes, Windows did not find any new modems, which does not surprise me in the slightest. Oh, and uh, may I add that that, um, that network share that I did, that is a 250 gigabyte drive. Um, granted, Windows 3.1 doesn't have to pay attention to that too much, but you did notice that it did not blow up. So let's see, uh, Aztec, I, I don't even know. I have absolutely no idea what modem this would even be. Yeah, I don't see it, and given how easy it is to brick Windows 3.1 in terms of drivers, I'm, I'm definitely not going to just try something. And, um, wow, did it really actually use virtual memory or something? Or is it just immediately hogging the processor doing something else? Or disk, not processor. I believe um, 
I believe Windows itself actually reports it as something ridiculous. Like, uh, yeah, it says it has uh, over 200, 200 something megabytes free, uh, 232,000 kilobytes. But okay, so that is uh, not good. This computer is, I believe, is actually the first one that I've seen where you can actually disable the uh, seek test if you so desire. Uh, but of course, I want to hear that. Oh wow, the wind pop-up thing no longer has that uh, weird garbage on top of the text. I think that was a leftover from when it, uh, from when I had the 16-color drivers still. One thing that may be interesting to note about this card is that it has an IDE interface on it, uh, as as did most um, older sound cards. Granted, this one is only for, I think, Panasonic. Um, but it is a, kind of a reminder of a weird era that sound cards uh, were in, when I guess uh, that was just how CD drives were done. But apparently... Uh, Apparently, uh, Internet Explorer is the key to time zones, which doesn't seem like what I remember. I'm pretty sure I told it my time zone before. Uh, daylight Savings Time apparently is a manual thing here, but I believe we're currently in EDT, so yes. Okay, guess it's booted up. Oh boy. Read me. Four eighty six with a twenty five megabyte megahertz processor. Twelve megabytes of RAM. Wow, that's that's actually a lot lar a lot higher than I thought it would have been. Okay. Maybe I should have ran the connection wizard first, but hopefully it'll understand that I have an internet connection. Uh, I wonder if this actually includes higher than 256 color graphics. Uh, but I am in 256 color mode currently, so it, it's not, it's obviously not going to display them either way. Oh dear. What? Dial up? Nuh uh. Now we might be cooking with Crisco. For whatever reason, it was not, I don't know, it was, tr maybe it was trying to load the site, I don't know, but it was not getting anywhere at all. Oh yeah, this thing might need the HTTP. That's not the right one. Connections, uh... Wait, what did that tell me? I did not see that. I did not select a dialer. You did that all by yourself. Oh, sure. This thing really just hates... Okay, that's handy. You don't suppose I can actually... Uh... Nope. Okay, so apparently LAN is just not recommended, so I guess I need to restart. If it really comes down to it, I can't uh, set up dial-up, but it's not happening in the time frame of this video. I think I did it. For some reason, it gave me a different prompt about using the LAN this time, and it did want me to restart, as you may have presumpted, uh, but I think it's not going to nag me this time. Oh my god, it's downloading from my site. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm not surprised that it does not even have any sort of portable network graphics support. I'm probably going to make that a, I guess a GIF or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what exactly tickles the fancy of uh, Internet Explorer 5. Um, but I, I know in 5.5... .5, the portable network graphic images will load. 
However, they uh, do not have transparency, which is rather peculiar. I guess maybe uh, a certain draft or earlier revision did not support it. You can see that some major dithering is happening with the old, the older JPEG logo. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it does. It, it seems to do uh, SSL 2.0 and 3.0. So let's just happen to see if our good old friend uh, site that I've known for approximately three days badssl.com just so happens to be able to um, connect using um, the SSL 2.0 or 3.0. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought. Um, I may need to specify HTTPS. Okay. But... Um, I do. I have always suspected that that site was probably using uh, TLS. However, it does load in 5.5 .5 on uh, Windows 95, at least a fully updated Windows 95. And of course, my site absolutely will not talk to anything lower than, I believe, a very specific TLS 1.0 cipher. And I cannot do anything about that really these days because... Uh, the SHA-2 certificates only go so so far down and it's literally impossible to get a new SHA-1 certificate. Uh, but it's not really a big loss. Because HTTP is still, you know, it's not, I don't think it's going anywhere, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Let's see, uh... I don't suppose this has any sort of multimedia support whatsoever. Even if it did, I doubt it would be able to muster enough power to load the uh, Windows Windows 3.1 tour or Windows Millennium tour video. A tour video would be way too advanced for uh, Windows 3.1. Yeah, I don't really have anything that Windows 3.1 could really even understand on here. Other, other than, I guess, that text file. Let's see, uh, what other site could we possibly check out? How about the good old friend msn.com, which still looks perfectly correctly in um, IE6 to this day. Uh, however, it does, it does actually um, not have the, uh, the, the slideshow thing. Now, why in the world is this not loaded? That's peculiar because it does. It definitely does not need HTTPS or anything. Um, perhaps I guess we'll just settle for this, maybe. Yeah, that loaded. Yep. Once again, we are met by the. Uh, Ghost of Portable Network Graphics. Let's see. Uh, granted, all, basically all we could do is uh, search things. I am surprised that this is actually not is is actually as not broken as it is. Uh, but yep, rip. Okay, but that is... Oh, whoa, that, that's interesting. How did I do that? Okay, but anyway... Um, what the heck? I don't know what that is, but... Anyway... Um, I think I've basically shown everything that I currently have set up with the internet portion of this video, uh, which is going to be incredibly long by the looks of things. Um, I actually did um, figure out uh, converting my logo to a GIF, and the background I did uh, change as well. 
Uh, it's not permanent, because I, I don't really like this background. It just happens to be a little more um, uh, of contrast, I guess. And the only thing that isn't quite right in Internet Explorer 5, at least on Windows 3.1, is that for some reason all this text has been shoved over to the left. Um, but, you know, it, it's better than it was because you can see the logo. But another interesting thing is that my net zero email does work at least partially, and as far as I can tell, so the problem that it seems to have lies in uh, the SMTP gateway. I don't even think it's my problem because experimenting with like you know programs from this century I was also unable to send any email. Um, so it's rather strange. Uh, however I can I can definitely receive emails as this one would show and this is just a standard net zero free email account using the pop server and um, hopefully my address is not anywhere I don't know if this news server is going to do anything I, I would extremely doubt it um, what do I want to do I guess well there's nothing there Oh, well, guess I'm not getting that. But anyway, um, that will probably conclude the web portion of this video. And no, because they're not going to send. And I suppose it is now time to look at some games. As you can see here, I have a stack of games, and I actually did install some games too. For example, in here we can find that there is a, well, Monopoly would work, but uh, Scrabble. For one reason I want to show this. Let me zoom out the camera a little bit. I really should be using the tripod and perhaps even some lighting in here, because it is rather not bright. But oh well. Once again, it's kind of interesting to have to load a caddy but it's not really that painful and it does make it a little harder to well I don't know I suppose you could easily scratch it putting it in the caddy but I suppose you could just buy one caddy for every disc and then you'd never have issues alright so now I need to remember where the heck that even is oh shoot it was the one called Scrabble wasn't it but this game, for some reason, has some rather intense music, and um, I must have I must have upgraded Win G or something because uh, I've definitely done this test since I've changed the resolution. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess we'll come back when that is done doing its thing. I told you the music is intense. Like, if this was like a military or, or maybe a space game, it would make sense, but... And well, I guess the uh, Scrabble board is apparently in space, but... You know, it's... Not really music that I would typically associate with Scrabble. I, I have not actually went so far to figure out the uh, in-game music. It's been legitimately a very long time since I've done it. Scrabble on M-Player? Must be, oh, some kind of multiplayer thing. Okay, new game. Um, sure. Oh dear. Great letters. Please choose new letters by clicking on perimeter dot. What? Oh. <laughs> I guess. Oh yes, okay, there's the music.
don't know. Uh, MIDI is definitely working on here, so I don't know why we don't hear anything. Um, but, um, yeah. That's too much thinking for right now. So the next thing I would like to try out is the Hoyle Casino. And apparently I'm zoomed in way too far to actually properly show this box. It is apparently a new release, and it was part of a two-piece pack, which this was sold to me, not new of course, so I mean the sticker doesn't really mean anything, it's just instruction to retailers. Um, but I don't, I don't even remember what it came with, I did figure it out at one point, but this is just the casino. It's for Windows 95 and 3.1, and it's on a CD. It's funny that um, I have like Hoyle Casino, um, I think 2007, and that actually still runs on Windows 95. So inside there is a registration card. Pretty standard registration card. And then a, a Hoyle rule book, and um, it's really just a standard um, book. I mean, it's not specific about the computers, so I mean, you can use it in real life and all that. I believe newer, some newer versions of, uh, of uh, Hoyle Casino came with a similar thing. And of course, the uh, Hoyle Casino CD jewel case with the Sierra logo at the bottom. Eventually it became, I think, Encore that made this. So we're supposed to insert the CD and then do File and Run, but I live dangerously and I use File Manager. Now that I finally found it, the, uh, the caddy thing, just put it in there and just let it suck it in. How exquisite. I I believe I said that the CD drive was a double speed drive, but um, I'm only getting single speed speeds uh, in Windows. I don't know if that's because of no DMA, though. I don't know. I think there would be enough uh, enough performance of this 133 megahertz processor to do without it to at least hit you know double speed, but I don't really know. So then we hit D, and I'll try that, but I imagine it's just going to air out as a typical... Oh, wow, okay. It, it might just be a stub that starts the installer. Okay, install it. It's apparently preparing system files. I don't know if that means it's silently... <laughs> updating uh, Win32s or whatever, but we're here now. Well, yes, it would certainly appear to be looking like it is a single speed drive. And apparently we somehow have a Pentium 143 MHz CPU. I've, I've not seen anywhere it indicating that my CPU is 143 MHz before now, so I kind of doubt that that's a thing. Um, let's see, uh, not tested, didn't test the MIDI. I guess. All right. Your system is correctly configured for playing WAV files. I don't remember doing that before. Aha. There's the MIDI. Okay, so let's actually install this. Oh my god, I just did all those tests. Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. Yes, indeed. I would have to imagine that whenever this is from is 
this is probably the last release that does work on Windows 3.1. That is squarely a guess, but I would be surprised if it didn't anymore. Okay, do we want to install Win32s? Well, I guess. I At some point I need to just for sure track down the latest version of Win32s, uh, but I have not done so so far. Uh, sounds like someone's here. Okay. Um, if, if I installed FreeCell every time I if I saw this, I'd have like 800 copies of FreeCell. Absolutely not. Not sure why it has... I guess it must do, support online registration because uh, there is a very much physical registration card, which software would not help with. But anyway, um, nah. I'm sure it'll run fine enough with whatever perhaps older files we have. Okay, so let's, um, let's see here. I wonder if, uh, like how the um, older, or the newer versions of Hoyle Casino, you can run in a somewhat limited mode without the um, CD present. I wonder if that goes for this. Though, by the aggressiveness of it loading things, I'm going to guess no. But this actually looks wildly different from the, uh, the later versions of the game. I mean, I'm sure it still functions the same way, but like, it's a totally different room. Oh boy. I guess you don't... I don't know, do you not get faces? I guess not. Alright. Alright. What is a sultan? If I actually knew things about casino, I'm sure, I'm sure I'd know, but... Oh, one of these things. Pretty sure there's a movie about that. Let's see if I can remember how to play poker. If the game ever happens to load, which I suppose it is probably my own fault because it's apparently running on a single speed CD drive. Okay, it seems that we have multiple players, okay, I guess it's Texas Hold'em, I think that's good, I think that's what I know slightly how to play. Bye bye. That's a fold if I've ever seen one. One of these days I might actually get to finish a hand. I fold. I guess he just wins by default. <laughs> Who knows? He could have had terrible cards for every, for all anyone knows. These cards look like they were scraped off the surface of the Autobahn. Um. Okay. I hate to disappoint you all, but I'll have to fold this time. I'm a joker, a smoker, and a midnight toker. I'm also a folder. I fold. Whoa. Ah, sure, why not? This is actually not too great of cards, but... This lovely lass must pass. Sure, let's lose. I check. Do you need ID? Yep. 
that pot is like my first diamond. It's nice, but I was hoping for something larger. Well, that's about enough of that. Oh my god, it has to read the CD drive just to close the game. Oh, it has to load this advertisement. Here we have a rather unusual one. This is a diskette that has been put into a CD jewel case that has been, uh, it has a new thing, whatever you call that, in here to hold a diskette, which I think is rather strange. Why not just use things that are designed for cassettes? I guess. I don't know. Maybe so it could fit on shelves with CDs at the store. I, I don't really know. I assume it was probably sold like this, considering it has a barcode. But this, as as you might have seen, is screensaver and wallpaper. Uh, doesn't say. Oh yeah, Windows 3.1 or later. Kind of impressive that it needs that new of a thing for just screensaver and uh, and um, wallpaper. Though I assume wallpaper can be used in whatever the first version of uh, Windows was to do not only 256 colors but um, custom wallpapers in general. Uh, wait, that's disc 2. I don't even know if these discs work, but we will see, won't we? So I assume that's a good place to start. SNX. I wonder if those are PCX images. Oh dear. I don't really want desktop wallpaper, but let's uh yeah, let's go with this screensaver, I guess. Well, apparently, the image extensions, if you can, if the thing would focus, are, yes, are actually SNX, which is rather strange. And this is definitely a rather generic uh, pamphlet, considering it just shows pictures of foxes and birds and stuff on that one. Alright, so I suppose that's installed. Let's go over to the control panel and see our wonderful uh, screensaver. Why is this... what are you doing? No. No. Why are you frozen? Why are you frozen? Apparently, Windows has gotten drunk enough that it thinks nothing is not responding. Uh, well, perhaps it is actually not um, broken anymore. That's, that was strange. Um, okay. Okay. So let's see this screen saver. Okay, um, I suppose that's a Japanese, yeah, it says it, I guess it says what it is, how about that? Okay, there we go. Alright, well, that was a quick look at that screen saver. I think I've only got one other game that I intend to show here. And that would be NASCAR Racing 2. There's the uh, goldenish CD. Try the install. Okay. Sounds good to me. Complete, of course. Here we are back again at this computer, and you can see that I fitted a switch to turn it on and off. And it's literally a light switch, um, but you know, it works. 
So now, um, I did get the um, NASCAR Special Edition installed. NASCAR Racing 2 to be exact. Um, it did take approximately one forever. But it's definitely installed now. And once this boots into DOS, we can check it out. And to see if I happen to remember how to play it literally at all. It's been quite a long time. Good old DOS slash 4GW. Okay, so let's see. Um, two forty. Yeah. Okay. Yes, indeed. Ten four. There we go. Okay, and fifty. And now it's accessing accessing the CD drive, and now it's doing a. Uh, little video thing. Actually, this is quite a big video thing from what I remember. How surprising, my single speed CD drive just doesn't cut the mustard. Uh, okay. Oh man, that just... Or no, I guess it's just working on stuff. Okay, it would look that we uh, successfully installed the expansion pack. Okay, quick race, which is not all that quick. Okay. Oh no. Return. No, that's not what I want. Of course, we're just going to get right into it. Oh dear. Here we go. Off to a great start, as you see. This has always been a really quiet game for some reason. And as far as I know, there's no, like, there's not really a way to set the volume in DOS. Like, there's not really a system volume. The programs just decide what, what volume they're going to play stuff at. But yeah, I think it's time for my strategy with this game. Okay. Now we just wait for some cars, which you don't have as much of an advance notice here as you think because there's not too many pixels to go around. Let's take a more active approach. Boop. 
brain freeze, eh? I think this is a little more than a brain freeze. Oh dear. <laughs> the, the, the thing is that you have to do this within a set number of laps because the race is only so many laps long. You can't have the cars finished before you're done literally murdering them. Well, I suppose not literally because uh, you're you're not, they're not living, they're just cars. It would be the drivers. Oh dear. Is that a Hooters car? <laughs> but anyway, um... I'm about out of space on the camcorder, or camera, it's not a camcorder at all. Um, so I guess I'll wrap things up here. Um, but yes, Windows 3.1 has definitely been a very interesting experience for me. And um, I've certainly learned quite a lot about Windows and Windows 3.1 and by extension DOS um, but not only am I about running out of space and apparently about running out of battery uh, but it is also very late so I would consider this a very good time to end the video um, let's see here oh that stupid slideshow program where is it? But case in point, uh, yes, it's 5:26 p.m. Of of course, of course, yes. Um, no, it's um. Once again, it's probably not going to focus on my watch because I've had this issue before. Um, but it's nearly 2 a.m. and yet, yeah, it, it, even just blocking out what it is focused on, it's not going to do it. But anyway, thank you for watching, and have a good day, or night, or whatever. <laughs>